We have this very interesting story regarding Joe Rogan on Spotify. So, I guess news has, um, I guess as you guys know, Joe Rogan signed a $100 million licensing deal, a multi-year deal with Spotify um, a few weeks ago or a couple of months ago. And of course, the switchover was uh, the 1st of September, which was a few days ago. And um, the idea is that Spotify basically licensed Joe Rogan podcast exclusively on Spotify where they're going to debut the vodcast they have which are essentially their video podcasts on their platform and they're going to have an exclusive license deal to only is you know release the show via Spotify and I guess um when Joe kind of announced that deal he kind of maintained that the only thing that will change would be the platform they would have no influence on you know the creative direction of the show in terms of the guests they get on or he gets on and stuff it would just be same old show doing it his way just on spotify and of course the added layer to it was that he was moving to texas um of course for a reason unbeknown to the public maybe due to taxes whatever it may be but just for another change um that would obviously lend itself to the narrative as well but now that it's kind of debuted on spotify people have noticed that some of the more controversial and interesting um, guest on the show had disappeared from the library entirely um, which has made people question whether or not Joe sold out whether or not he's kind of going against his um, anti-censorship stance on things and just people have a lot of questions in general regarding everything that's happening with this situation I myself don't really mind you know I think if he has sold out I think he's earned the right to um, I'm still a big fan of the show regardless of that extent but this is an article here from msn to the following joe rogan debuts on spotify with the most controversial episodes missing joe rogan made his debut on spotify on tuesday but apparently not all the podcast episodes made a cut um it says several past episodes from the controversial guest are notably absent from the new joe rogan experience channel including interviews and conspiracy theorists alex jones and david seaman right-wing figures such as owen benjamin marlon Yann yannanapolis um, gavin mcginnis charles c johnson and sargon of a card and comedian chris delia who was recently accused of sexual impropriety and a few vanished guests were more perplexing such as the activist tommy chung uh rogan fans wondered online whether spotify refused to um certain episodes so allow certain episodes or if rogan himself decided to trim the archive of his most frequently criticized content or if this was some sort of oddly pacific temporary oversight a representative of the spotify and rogan did not return a request for comment and Rogan's Twitter feed was silent on the matter. Michaela Peterson, daughter of controversial professor and public speaker Jordan Peterson, slammed the move. She said, Okay, getting demonetized by YouTube is one thing. At least they didn't shut down my channel. However, this is completely different. Spotify is not uploading select Joe Rogan episodes, including my episode. And it continues as Spotify reportedly paid more than $100 million to law, the country's most popular podcast exclusive to the streaming service. The Spotify-based shows launched with a marathon five-hour interview with the comedian Duncan Trussell, but the missing episodes were not addressed. Rogan's shows are still currently available on YouTube and podcasts and platforms like iTunes, but the plan is for the GRE to move exclusively to Spotify. By the end of the year, the partnership was considered a massive win for Spotify, which has seen its stock nearly double since the deal was announced in May. Rogan's podcast includes more than 1,500 episodes of long-form interviews with comedians, actors, sports figures, and la The comedian and MMA community is also long prided himself as talking to people from across the political spectrum and was frequently read against deplatforming tech companies that remove controversial voices he says they want me just to continue doing what i'm doing right now rogan has previously said in his spotify deal it's just a licensing deal as spotify won't have any creative control over the show it'll be the exact same show we're going to be doing we're going to be we're going to be working with the same crew doing the exact same show <sighs> I don't know, man. I don't know if it's true or not. I don't know if this is just like a, a temporary thing because they're migrating all the shows over. I know when I had to take, when I had to change my um, podcasting RSS provider, whatever platform that I was using, it took a while for stuff to kind of migrate over. So that might be the case. And I only have 300 plus episodes pales into comparison with Joe that has nearly, you know, 1500. So that might be the case. Or it just might be the case where he's just in a position now where he has to kind of choose his battles and maybe you know having people like milo and so i've got another card on these archive list of stuff might not be the best way forward for him like you know unfortunately you know we are living in a world where most of these tech platforms 
these DSPs, these streaming platforms are quite left-leaning in their politics. Um, they do kind of buckle to the pressure of, um, you know, well-meaning social justice warriors who kind of feel as if the voices that Joe Rogan has on his podcast are damaging and they promote hate speech and all this sort of stuff. So I get the, I get it from the big tech platform's point of view that they just want to avoid any kind of drama and any kind of show that does bring that drama or is kind of, you know, bringing untoward attention towards them, they're going to cut them um, as soon as possible because, you know, they're in it for the long game. They have investors, um, people they have to look after and stuff. I understand, you know, the kind of, you know, weird, deal they're having to make there but i guess in terms of rogan's position if you're a fan of his it probably is going to sting a bit because he is men mr anti-censorship he is somebody that's kind of rallied against um the idea that these tech companies are essentially taking away the ability of certain people to have a voice in the public square um you know i think of somebody like a katie hopkins who's a pretty dip you know deplorable person but you know like removing her from twitter and essentially not giving her an option to say any of her kind of ludicrously ludicrously crazy things is really a net negative for society because eventually those same people that take away her ability to speak will also come after other people who they don't agree with and that might be somebody that you know um same thing would happen to alex jones right at one point alex jones was the biggest podcaster or the biggest kind of person on youtube and then suddenly over you know in a concentrated effort maybe over was it a couple of days or something that suddenly one tech platform decided to take away his ability to stream or use their platform and suddenly all of the others followed in suit and now he's essentially been left to only stream on his own platform and i'm sure he's even run into issues in that respect too so it's not necessarily the right way to go about things in my opinion i still think you should allow these freaks and wacko jobs to say what they want to say in the public square and it's up to the public to decide whether or not they're going to pay them any mind i think this idea of silencing voices and taking them out of the public conversation does the complete opposite if anything it kind of emboldens and really kind of focuses in um his fans to or his fans i'm, I'm saying in terms of alex jones sagas of a card to go and follow them whatever platform they decide to go on next i don't necessarily think that's the best way to deal with it but the list is pretty interesting right um, itself. Someone put the list here on Twitter. So this is a guy, uh, Nathan Bernard, said Jogan's podcast moves quickly to profile for signing a hundred million deal, and his fans are not happy about what episodes are being left behind during a transition. So this is the full list of so far people have kind of put together via the Jerry podcast. I think um, Reddit subreddit. Sorry. So let's go through them in terms of you know offensiveness. I guess you got Owen Smith here who that's an odd one right he's a pretty chill stand-up comedian who joe kind of really likes the crystal situation is interesting because of course he's been accused of what he's been accused of but there's also this idea that what is there a rule now that if somebody if a past joe rogan guest has an allegation against them they have to take down the episode and not have it available for streaming platforms does that mean when neil degrasse tyson was yeah when Neil Crest Tyson was going through his issues where he was accused of some something um untowards with women um they didn't remove his episodes on there right that didn't really happen so that's a really strange one because I'm sure you could go through the list of past Jerry guests and come across some people who have some unsavory um allegations next to their names right Michael Shermer again that's a weird one um I'm guessing that's you know National History Museum people getting their knickers in a bunch tommy chong again a pretty you know uh harmless guy weed advocate that doesn't need to be on that list joe list is a very strange one i'm not too sure if that's like a that might be an error alex jones returns of course you know alex jones is not going to be on there nick cross another strange one a pretty middle of the road comedian and improv guy and just generally people tend to like him anyway michaela peterson you kind of get that because she's of course um, the daughter of jordan peterson who's very controversial and maybe her own opinions and views you know the old meat diet all that sort of stuff they don't want to be attached with you're not too sure you got Owen Benjamin and Bert and Kurt Metzger I think this might have been the podcast that actually led to just no I think the one with Owen Benjamin on his own might have been the one that led to his actual breakdown and not break that or breakthrough he might suggest right when he decided to kind of um, abandon the LA scene and move somewhere in the mountains or wherever he lives now at the moment um again a couple more Owen Benjamin ones as well he's been on there quite a bit Owen Benjamin isn't it, considering um Chris Lear again we've got Sargon of a card Gavin McGuinness again that's self-explanatory there especially with that proud boys nonsense that happened Alex Jones Eddie Bravo we get that it's weird that they allow Alex Jones they allow Eddie Bravo on and Alex Jones not and I would say 
they're probably on the same frequency when it comes to like the bat shittedness craziness in terms of quote conspiracy theories and all that deep state stuff they're probably on the same level of frequency maybe alex jones is a bit more further ahead in terms of you know lizard people and stuff but um eddie brother still questions completely everything right he's he doesn't believe anything that comes out of mainstream media he's definitely on that conspiracy train milo of course we understand why he's not on there kip anderson keegan coon products of conspiracy and other conspiracy people i guess gavin mcginnis milo again charles c johnson who else we've got in here next one stefan molyneux we get that right he's always fucking you know ranting on about iq and race and skull sizes and stuff he's a bit of an oddball in that regard there's no loss there ricks and grace is an odd one don't know what that's about um david seaman of course maybe because he went nuts in the end lou Ferru again is a strange one war machine was on jre bloody hell i don't remember that one that's a mad one that's that that's understandable right that's completely understandable mama mia brian dunning again is an odd one Dave Asprey probably makes sense because I don't think Joe actually liked him. I'm not sure sure why he's on the show. I think that might have been of I think that might have been one of the last one. I think Joe mentions it a few times about not wanting to do favors for friends anymore. And I think that might have been one of them where a friend um suggested that he gets one of their friends on, right? And Dave Asprey, I think that was during the time when he was doing his nonsense bulletproof coffee stuff. And I think he's still doing a sun blocker stuff. You know, he he turned into a bit of a charlatan towards the end. But I think Joe didn't actually like the guy when he was on his podcast anyway. Um Dr. David Greer, I'm not sure who that person is. Matt Vingreen, I'm not sure who that is. Dave Asprey again, David Seaman, um Adam Kokesh, Eddie Bravo, Joey Diaz. We understand why that one was because right, is one of those kind of episodes where he talked about climbing into someone's window and eating them out <laughs> brian callan jimmy Berg, brian redband again why is that because callan mentions something untowards about women maybe um uh joey diaz again jane irvin i'm oh, sorry that is john irvin joey diaz brian redband joey white freddie locker again really interesting and odd list i'm not too sure again what the rationale behind it is and i don't know in my opinion I'm a fan of JRE. I'm always going to be a fan. I'm always going to check him out the show. And I think if he has sold out for 100 M's, I think people have done far worse for far little, for, for much, you know, for, for far less than what he's getting paid. And if he decides to, you know, essentially sell his soul to the Spotify overlords in order to kind of maintain any kind of semblance of independency, then so be it. If he has to sacrifice Stephen Molyneux and a few Owen Benjamin videos and stuff, like it is what it is. But it is a shame because you did get the impression that he was going to run away to Spotify in order to have a free platform to do what the hell he wanted to do. So if he's just if it's kind of running to the same issues he had on YouTube, I don't see why he moved to Spotify. I'm just you know, of course I know why he moved. The money was bloody good, especially for a licensing deal, but it does kind of make you kind of um, look him a bit different, especially if he decided, if if this was something that was already decided um, when the deal was getting signed and he purposely misled people, or if this is just a, a clerical error, we don't know. Maybe it might just be a tech support thing, uh, an admin thing, do you know what I mean? Because it does take a while for your RSS feed to come over and migrate onto other platforms. But yeah, let me know your thoughts down below. Do you think, does Joe let you down? Um, do you understand his position in not allowing so many people to come on the show? Let me know your thoughts down below.